Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here we have George Arias representing the Bronx and the Pride of Dominican Republic. George, thanks for allowing me um, having this interview with you. How are things going with you in your career? Well, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And uh, right now, thank God, thank God, we are 17 and 0 with seven knockouts. And we're regularly, today was a regular day, just training and a little bit of work. I do work all the time, little gigs here and there. But great day of training and jobs at the end of the day. Yes, so it's like 10 in the night. Great, great, George. It's great to hear you. You're continuing doing um, your drills, your training camp, and everything. Um, here we go. I know you. You're first of all, you know. Congrats on your last uh, performance. You took the win. Um, gr great uh, performance from your opponent too, because it was tough. Tell us how was it for you to conquer this uh, this uh, victory that you uh, recently you had in your career? Well, the first thing that I was focusing on for this fight was the fact that it was my first 10 rounder. So I prioritized my conditioning more than anything. I was doing everything I could to the hardest. You know, I was really focused on my endurance. I was uh, focused on everything that I, that I understood that I did well. And The game plan, for the most part, was to use my, my speed, use my footwork, and, you know, be elusive. Uh, a, a strong puncher needs to sit down to hit hard. So just keep them on you know, roller skates and just keep, you know, and with good stamina to keep the same pace. That way things are constantly, you know, feeling hectic and you kind of get psychologically a little bit. Great. Talking about with speed and stamina and all the, all these things that you eventually you work you know before i know you go by the gentleman nickname but also you go gentleman nickname uh arias the gentleman arias george arias but also you going by the dominican mike tyson how do you feel when <laughs> when someone calls you like that do you get upset or, or it's a compliment for you oh big compliment big compliment i feel like my tyson epitome of uh, an exciting and explosive, just an all-around entertaining fighter. And, you know, to, for people to tell me that my style reminds me of some of it is a humongous, uh, it makes me happy. I mean, I'm like, man, let's, let's keep doing it. Let's work harder. Let's do more. You know, and it's very motivational. Man. I'm always very inspired when people like what I do because I do it with a lot of, you know, uh, with a lot of passion and, and understanding that, you know, you can't get tired. You got to do you gotta do it all the time because people when they watch it you know that's what entertains them so I always keep the fans in mind so that when I fight you know it's, it's interesting it's great to hear you eventually you, you take the nickname both nicknames as a compliment I mean it's great to uh, to imagine and, and say oh someone calls me like like The Dominican Mike Tyson and 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 you be like oh it's an inspiration for me in order to work more harder to continue pursuing um, this movement uh, and and get better in my skills. Talking about skills, talking about uh, Mike Tyson and, and this movement of heavyweight division. Can you tell us how close do you think you feel you are close for a world title? For a world title, I'll tell you that I just recently had my first 10 rounds. And, you know, it, yeah, 10 rounds is a lot. It, so, and it was against a tough opponent, you know. So, it was like, a, so I, I would like to have, you know, I'm always open. You know, I'll fight anybody. I'm always open to fight anybody. Um, I would absolutely love for my resume to have a lot of these, you know, it's a lot of other um, undefeated guys, a lot of up-and-coming guys, a lot of tough guys that feel like, wow, what a, what a pleasure to have those guys in my resume, you know, and a world title, whenever, you know, that's always gonna, it's, it's, it's always a possibility, I, I also, on the way to the championship, I prioritize having good fights, you know, but uh, championship, man, give it a year, you know, I, I, I consider myself ready now, but I, I'm mature enough to understand that. There's a lot, you know, 10 round fights, I only have one. Let me, you know, move, move a little bit with some other lines. And eventually, 
a championship that soon, that soon, because I wanted two deals. So we're working as hard as I can to get there. So for the meantime, man, anybody, there's a lot of great fights to be had that don't have championships in, in, on the line, you know? So those are also exciting for me. Great to hear that, that you are not afraid to let it go, the, the zero, because eventually, because sometimes we've seen in the past, right? And with all due respect to Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, and I could go other, by other names, because uh, the list is, you know, is pretty much, you know, pretty much big. Um, I remember that we were expecting to see Joshua versus Deontay Wilder, and I don't know if he, that was the purse that who's gonna win more or who's gonna earn more who's gonna who's gonna get paid more or less we couldn't see the ante um against joshua and i think this fights the uh when you're just saying it's a great point because you're not afraid you're not scared to let it go the zero if it happens but i mean i'm not saying that that i want you to lose but it seems that you you definitely you are in in the role where you said Put me whoever wants to uh, to fight with me. I'll take the fight. Yeah, because that's what it's about. When you're a fighter, it's, that's what you you understood that from the beginning. That, man, you, there's other people that are also donating. Eventually, to get ahead, you're going to have to go, hey, that's, I think that's normal. I think that's actually what I've been waiting for, to get to the position where now it's like, like, you know, capable people going at it. That's, I think that's exactly what, what, what boxing is about. I, I never really thought of, like, I, I don't want to be a celebrity or something like that. So I'm not, uh, I want to be more like a, a respected fighter, you know. To be respected in boxing, I think you should take on other worthy warriors. Go, you know, have a nice resume. I think that's very, I think that's like one of my top things. I want to have a nice resume, really good. It's true. I mean, eventually, um, I got a lot of respect for all the fighters. All the, even though you know, if it in the career they had uh, a loss, uh, I always said it. Uh, I consider when a fighter has a loss in the career or, or loses a fight, it's only a lesson because that makes you better. That makes you to train harder and say, okay, I think I did this wrong, so I got to go back to the drawing board and say, hey, I got to practice more this and, and maybe in the next fight I'll, I'll be better. So it's great to hear you're not afraid to let it go the, if it one day happens, but I mean, we don't want to see that, that thing happens. Uh, eventually, you're going to work harder for continue being undefeated. So talking about undefeated uh, fighters, I know we, the fight fans, they they want it and they would love to see Joshua versus Deontay. But eventually, right now, who has the titles is Alexander Usyk, Tyson Fury. Do you think that this match is pretty much close for this year, 2022, or it will take more longer in order to make this fight happen? Joshua Wilder? No, Alexander Usyk or uh, versus Tyson Fury because now both of them they have the titles. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that that's there. I think uh, Wilder versus Joshua. It, it, I think it's even a more exciting fight. I think that would be and hopefully because they both came off of a loss, they feel hungry, you know, to to make it happen. Because for Anthony Joshua to have Wilder in his resume would mean that. Even though he just took a loss, he went up against, you know, uh, another big, capable guy and, and won. Now he should be next in line, you know. And I think that's, that probably would make more sense. I think it would be easier to make Wilder and Joshua. Music and, and, and the Fury, I think they could, they, they could just be there for a while. I don't, I, don't, I don't see a reason why either one of them would hesitate. I think they show that they, they really would do it. You know, they would, they're not going to drag it like over Mayweather Park yeah? I think they'll do it easily, but then there comes the politics of the sport, which the, the, the athlete is not necessarily directly calling shots, it, it, and then become the business. Those are the reasons why maybe, uh, why not use it, fight other people, theory, fight other people, you can prolong it, you know, that one you can prolong, but I think Joshua and, and Wilder, should, it could happen this year, absolutely, I think so, should happen this year. 
I would love to see that fight because uh, I remember back in the days, or I mean, not back in the days. Let me correct myself. Uh, like years ago, uh, we were we wanted to see Joshua versus Wilder, and I know that they were they were kind of you know fighting backwards, like oh you know I'm better than you, and you are and you're not ready for me, and things like that. So both fighters they were you know uh, tricking themselves each other, and unfortunately politics or I don't know if that was the purse, who gets more money, who gets less. We couldn't see this fight happens. So now the bow fighters they have their lots in the careers. I think the fight fans deserve the fight to see it. A lot of people might gonna say no. A lot of people might gonna say yes. I want to see it. I'm one of the fight fans that I would love to see Joshua versus Wilder. I think that's a that's favorite. If it happens, who you think it will win in this fight? Who you see with more skills, more power that will deliver in this fight? Wilder, Wilder. We've seen that in that he has an. I, I think Wilder because Wilder shows, you know, when 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 an athlete shows you the heart that Wilder showed in that last fight, you know that you got to kill him, right? Because Wilder landed the same punches they have knocked out people before, but it was the Tyson is so big, you know, he's a big guy. That same punch, he dropped him twice. I said, he really caught him with the haymakers after they putting everybody to sleep. He just met a bigger guy. I think Joshua can outbox him maybe one round, maybe two. But one of these, you know, can he take that? He's been a little, like, wobbly a couple times with real good hits. And you going up against the biggest hitter in the game. It almost seemed like like, uh, like one of those fights where Wilder can act like, like Ortiz. You know, like, he can completely get dominated. Just lands one, and I think it should be. I think uh, I don't maybe I doubt, I doubt if Josh will get up from a clean punch from Wilder. I think that will be a really good fight because Wilder will take a, a, a little bit of an ass whooping at first, and he'll come and beat you know with that final punch. So it'll be a great fight, actually. It would be if he, if he, this fight happens. I'm hoping that twenty this and year twenty. Twenty twenty two twenty twenty two it would be the year that in this division heavyweight division we will see uh Joshua versus Wilder regardless of you know who has lost and who for you know who so I think the fight fans deserve to see this fight and and talking about you know deserve this to to see or watch these fights um right now Tyson Fury is the one I think if I'm not mistaken who's gonna face Dylan White. Do you think that Dylan White has the, the stamina or, or the or the pedigree in order to be Tyson Fury? I think not. Because I think that uh, Gypsy King has a lot of advantages that I think I think just reach alone, he got the reach. Forward, he has the forward. He hits hard. He can take a hit on paper. Uh, uh, Gypsy King has everything going on. He got everything going on on paper. Now, Dylan White, should he pull this off? Unbelievable. You know? It will be a really big... It will completely upset the game, you know? It makes sense right now, you know? This guy, this guy, because they both have four wars. And Dylan White coming, that's a big upset. You know, that, that, that'll be... That's big money. Ooh. If Dylan White be... <laughs> big upset. <laughs> Talking talking about big upsets that I mean eventually we we seen in 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 years ago like Joshua when he fought uh, Andy Ruiz and Andy Ruiz impressed everyone in in the Garden because I think the bets they were going against Andy Ruiz the favorite one it was Joshua and look at what happened that was the upset right there and not disrespecting Joshua I mean he got skills and everything but I always tell people. Uh, I'm not here over. Here. I'm not. Here. I'm not the one who's gonna box. They are the ones who who's gonna show us who's who has better stamina and and who got prepared plan. So eventually, I always wish you know everyone to to work harder for their dreams. But eventually, upsets happens in in the boxing. Uh, we seen recently Teofimo going against George Camposo. Another upset right there. 
um, this division where these fighters they they belong or they fight, I think it it, it calls uh, it calls the attention of every fight fan because now if you if you realize as you mentioned him before, you're not scared to let it go to zero. Right now the fighters they be like, if he if he that fight you know happens, let's say in in case in this case uh, Crawford. Um, Errol Spence, I think it's taking too long. Do you think that it's taking too long or? It's taking uh, too long, but I think this year, <laughs> like, they both could have a fight. They got to fight each other because, you know, what else? I think unless somebody comes like uh, like Uga, you know, somebody like that, they said, Quietly obsessing. It's really that's it. That's the fight that that, that anybody want to see. All they could do is fight other people, but that yeah, it has to happen. Because if they lose to each other, it's not really a loss. Somebody's gonna be the ultimate, you know, guy. But it's not really a loss because he's fighting another, you know, another warrior. You can fight him again. You can put a rematch. But it's really, yeah, hey, I don't know why. It's like that a lot, a lot of times. When people want to see a fight. It's become the hardest thing to do, but man, I think you know the way Crawford handled Porter. I think I think Crawford wins that. I think he, I think he wins it. I'm, I'm almost confident Crawford wins. It. It's just very, very, very cerebral, very well done. Everything there, you can watch it and learn. Even if you don't like boxing, you can watch it and learn. So yeah. I think it was Crawford's my I, I favorite Crawford in that fight. I would love to see. I would like, even if they don't fight, I, I think Crawford is better. You know, that's what he... If they don't fight, Crawford has shown more of the, you know... Uh, Spence is hard. That's always open, you know. That's always a possibility of, of dropping anybody. But I think Crawford has impressed me the most. So I, I would give him the edge. And I'm not good with with picking people, you know. Because I like... like Amir, I had Amir Khan to win this weekend. Because I like him. I like that he fights everybody. He gets knocked out, maybe his legs and his chin may not be the best. But I have a respect for him because he fought a lot of dangerous people. He, fought, he, he, he could have gotten to see with Maidana. Yeah. He survived, you know. And he has taken good fighters to this. He's not a slouch by any stretch. But yeah, he can't. he's always through so many punches that he's always open. So he's there a bit. Whoop, so you can understand that. Uh, Offensive fighter might be open a lot more, but I, you know, I like I like fighters for for things that are might not be why they're favored. So I like Amir Khan because you know he fights everybody. I like Crawford because I saw that he could take somebody like Porter that gives everybody a hard time and just disassemble him. And Spence, I've seen him operate more with strength, you know, strength and real. I I I really think Spence has real real good endurance. So endurance and Punching power and Crawford is so he starts off so slow and like it's so like tapping and you know it's so light that things pick up. There's more of a like he breaks it down psychologically. So I like his I like him against uh, Spence a lot more. This this fight I would love to see also in, or I would love to watch probably this year 2022. If it not happen, I mean I don't know what can I say. I mean you just said it. Uh, put in an, a great example, Amir Khan, a guy that even though has uh, lost in their career, he's not. He wasn't scared to fight anybody. He just, you know, raised his hand and said, "Hey, I want to fight. I want to make great fights." And and I think we're gonna we're gonna remember him when when he retires. I think if I'm not mistaken, he's gonna retire soon, or he probably already retired. So we're gonna remember him, you know, for all these fights that he done. And hopefully we we get to watch all these fights uh, that eventually we just mentioned. And of course, stay tuned in your you know in your career because eventually George Arias has a lot of you know to show and and the fight fans that they, they still expecting to see the great the great things that you will bring in you know in the next fight. Uh, George, uh, you would like to add a, a message for the fight fans and everyone before we wrap it up this interview? Yes. So thankful to everybody. They showed me love. They showed me support. 
man, I honestly, it's, I'm, I'm speechless sometimes with how many people believe in me, man. That's so cool. Man, beautiful people out there. They really believe in me and really support me and really show up to the fight, man. Can't believe it because, you know, you see my, my gym more spark is like a hole in the wall sometimes. And to go out, you know, and to see how, how many people that know me from there, wow, it's like very, very flattering. So to all my fans, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate everybody, everybody. I take time to say thank you to anybody that hits me up because I really appreciate you guys. So thank you. Thank you. If you support me, thank you so much. And I work hard for you guys to see good fights. And I believe, I, I really believe I'm, I'm a champion, man. <laughs> I believe so too, George. I mean, I, I've been there. I've been there. I, I even though we you know, I remember we ran in the night, me and you, and it was yeah. fun for me. It was fun for me, and and I it think was, and I, I and I believe that one day you will have a world title right around your your waist. So definitely, you 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 are in the road in the right road in order to make that happen in the future. God willing, first. No, gracias a ti, George. Ahora sí que vamos a estar pendientes a tu carrera. We're going to stay tuned in your career and, and see the great things that you will deliver in the next fight. Uh, George, I want to say thank you for taking the time for me and it's always a pleasure for me to support yourself. Siempre, mi hermano. Thank you. I appreciate the energy, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.